Have a nice trip down to hell, buddy. <laughs> right? <laughs> so kind, would you introduce yourselves for the mic? I'm Dylan, and I sing in Full of Hell. I'm Dave Land, I play drums. Uh, so right now we're sitting in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and in a little while you guys are going to be playing your first show in Malaysia. Um, your third, third show, third in, Malaysia? show in Malaysia? Yeah. We did Kuching in Kota Kinabalu. Oh, nice. Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. My bad. And this is your, your fourth show on the South Asian tour? Yeah, in the Southeast Asian portion. Okay. Yeah, because we also did two shows in South Korea. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, how many dates do you have uh, in Southeast Asia in general? No, uh, eight, uh, seven, I guess. Seven. The, and then the first two were in Seoul, in okay. South Korea. Very cool. So, you guys are hitting uh, a lot of places that a lot of bands don't get to tour, like you guys played in the Philippines. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And it's, it's cool that you guys played uh, uh, Saba, uh, pitching in, what's been about it. Yeah, yeah man. A lot, of, a lot of bands just play like this part of Malaysia, and they don't get to go over there. That's what I heard. Yeah. That's what they told us. And it was awesome. I, it didn't like it didn't feel like a place that bands don't hit. Like, maybe yeah. in the States, you go to a town that bands don't hit, and you, you feel like that. Like, uh, it just feels maybe a little weird, you know? Oh, there's not many kids, but... KK was fucking sick. Yeah, and never Kuching, Kuching, to me, felt like like must be a spot every, every band goes to. Yeah. It was so tight. All the shows have been great. One band that has played Kuching and not like the other parts of Malaysia is uh, Carcass. For no, yeah, reason. they played the same place. And they, never, played, yeah. and they never go to Kuala Lumpur? Well, what happened was they were supposed to come to Kuala Lumpur, and because they played Kuching, which is sort of out of the way, um, the Malaysian government didn't pay any attention. And once they were trying to get a permit to play Kuala Lumpur, the Malaysian government was like, wait, what's this band Carcass? And I looked at their lyrics and was like, nope. Wow, because um, oh, they're so high profile. Yeah, um, and then uh, Carcass were like, well, we're sorry, but we already played Malaysia. So, and that's Damn, how, yeah. strangeness. Uh, so let's talk about how uh, this tour came about. Who got in contact with you guys? Um, well, the Big Mouth Booking dude, Cha, has been contacting me for probably two and a half years. And two and a half years ago, I wasn't as like, Maybe maybe as well traveled as I am now, and uh, the the idea of spending like all the money it would take to get here was like a little daunting because I knew we'd only be able to do like like seven shows, and now the difference is uh, it's not such a scary number to fly over here, and we we can pair it with other tours like we did South Korea and we're doing Australia so the trip's totally affordable and we did a Californian tour because we live on the East Coast so it's like it was like a bunch of tours strung together to save money. And was it a bunch of different promoters working together to get you guys from one place to another? Yeah, absolutely. Like, every day is a different guy. Like, this dude, big mouth booking guy, is kind of like the overseer, I guess. And then there's a lot of responsibility with each each city. 
and and everyone knows everybody. It seems like, and they're all like in touch with each other. And yeah. Everyone's just taking care of us. It's really cool. Yeah. So we're at about the midpoint of the tour. Um, how has it um, met your expectations? Exceeded your expectations? Um, I had pretty high expectations. Like I didn't have like a visual image of what anything would be like, but I was pretty confident that it was going to be kind of crazy, like in a good way, and it has been every single day. Um, I also knew it would be exhausting to fly every single day and to be in like such a like different part of the world. And, and on, to be honest, like touring and relying on other people is like mentally exhausting to me. And everyone's been like wonderful and reliable and perfect, but it's still exhausting to me. So this has been the most tiring trip I've ever been on, for sure. Because we didn't, we don't really have any flight information. We fly every fucking day. It's it's totally worth it, but it's totally exhausting. What were you expecting? Um, I was expecting a lot of like really sincere punks and a lot of really sincere bands, like that really gave a shit about what they were doing and didn't really have any like maybe like any any ulterior motive to like being into music. Like it was maybe like just just truly about being being there for the experience and they, very supportive maybe. And I expected uh, I don't know. But Were you I, expecting the amps to work? Because that doesn't always happen. I was expecting really shitty equipment. Yeah, it was every night, you know, that's what I would expect. But I was fully expecting really shitty equipment, but every single night the equipment's actually been awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, a few of the nights there were even orange stuff, which is, oh. like, amps that we like. Yeah. But every night the amps have been pretty great. The only the only terrible amp situation was in uh, the one show in South Korea was in, like, a super DIY spot, and it was combo amps. But even that sounded that, Even that was fine. It was just like a little space, you know? It didn't even really matter that much. When, when you turn the States, what's your what's your gear situation? Do you pack, like, everything? And, yeah. yeah. We, everything. Bring, we bring everything, so we're yeah. like, we have everything we need. Except for a PA system. Yeah. So. And as, as you're touring uh, through Asia, um, do you guys just have your instruments with you? We have, our, we have a bit more than, I think, the average band that comes from America. Because since I do my noise... We have the guitars, but we also have a noise rig, and then like our guitar player has his own pedal board as well. So like a lot more pedals than the average band probably, and then plus the merch. But normal stuff besides that, just breakables, breakables and stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's talk about the merch situation because we were discussing it uh, a little while earlier. Um, it sounds like you guys have been cleaning up now as you're making your way through Asia. I mean, we were cleaning up for like two days, and then there was nothing to <laughs> clean up anymore. It was cool. We brought as much stuff as we possibly could. It was kind of, like, stupid, I felt like, carrying all that stuff. And everyone was giving us a look. Like, in South Korea, the promoter was like, whoa, you brought so much stuff. But we did pretty well in South Korea, and then the Manila show was, like, insane. And after that, it was just, like, kind of fucked. But then I I realized, like, I don't think we could have physically carried, like, what would have been necessary. Because we couldn't ship it down here. The customs was, like, really bad. Yeah. So it was just things impossible. have a habit of disappearing once they uh, <laughs> once they're shipped to Malaysia. We yeah. we've learned from experience shipping stuff down here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, who was who was buying stuff? Was it uh, just kids? Was it distros? Was it no distros? I traded three CDs to a distro for some bootleg T-shirts. That's it though. We just sold all all the stuff to kids. It was seriously just Manila. I think if I could have brought enough stuff, it would have been like. I just kind of feel like. I don't really care about selling this stuff. I was glad to get rid of it, but I just kind of wish we had stuff for the other shows. Yeah, but yeah it was all kids. Was so cool. We just talked about how it would have been hard for you guys to bring more more merch and more gear than you already have. Is there anything else that you would have changed? Uh, I honestly can't say I would have changed anything. Maybe I would have made everyone leave their sleeping bags at home. Because we still have like this one bag, this duffel bag that's like kind of full. And I realized when I look into it, it's just sleeping bags and, like, a couple little bags. But we haven't really used our sleeping bags. At all. (laughs) I didn't bring a sleeping bag, and it was an accident that I didn't bring it, and I was so glad I didn't bring it, because I haven't needed it. But, yeah, I mean, no. It was perfect. It's it's cool. And if any of your friends want to do a Southeast Asian tour, um, what would you tell them? Trust the promoters, and just, like, even though you might not have a whole lot of information, just, like, trust... uh, but they got a really good system down here. And uh, be nimble on your feet and be willing to use whatever gear you, you need to use. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How flexible are you guys about gear? Really flexible. I mean, we're really, really picky about gear, but we'll use anything. Like, We're not going to be dickheads. Like, If the venue has combos and we're in a tour like this, I'm not going to like complain about it at all. 
we understand and we're like very fun. I don't I'll know. play on any drums it doesn't matter yeah this, this dude will literally play on any, any drums falling apart like broken heads whatever yeah
this will actually be the second time I see you guys play. I was lucky enough to catch you when you played ABC, and that was one of two shows that you played that same day. So it kind of seems like you guys are real road warriors. How many shows a year do you play, do you think? I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, but it's at least like... Probably like four months solid a year. Yeah, four months solid. It feels sure. like... it. We, and it feels like more. When, me, when we know. have our schedule on the internet, people have this assumption that we tour like all year round. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's an illusion that like it looks like, holy shit, they're always fucking on tour. But we're really not. We're home yeah. more than we're on tour. It's probably like four months a year, which is still a lot to me. So maybe I, like... Maybe it's like pretty much like a home to for a month shows. or maybe a two months and then like gone for a month. You know, like that kind of... So and it just like a non-stop routine of that. Probably 100, 150 shows a year. Yeah. That's still yeah. pretty impressive. Like, how do you schedule your tours? Do you schedule them around leases? Do you uh, do you look for opportunities to tour with other bands? We we uh, we have a lot of goals with the band, and like we have particular tastes. So we only tour with bands that we think are good. And uh, I'm really conscious about not overkilling like any areas. So like we can't just tour the U.S. like over and over again. I'm like aware of that fact. So I try to spread things out. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how we plan it. We just uh, look for like-minded people and, and think of, like, is, would this be valuable for our time? Because our time, I, I don't really, I love being on tour, but I also love being home, so I don't want to go on tour and, like, not have fun. So yeah. it really has to be worth it. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's your favorite part of touring? Just playing, like, the, the, the set, the 20 minutes that we're playing. Like, that's the thing I, t I tell myself like I love the traveling so like so much it's wonderful to see other places but I would play like a blank city every day same city every fucking day if I could just because I just like the act of playing I think that's why I do this yeah. for sure Very cool. so I guess the last thing you guys released was a split with or collaboration I guess I should say with uh, Mertzbaum. Um and this is if I'm not mistaken the second time you guys have collaborated with Mertzbaum. It's it's one it's one record, uh, but it's like two, two discs. Okay. So it's like a double album, sort of. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm sure you've answered this uh, question a million times. So uh, <laughs> fill in the blank. Blah blah blah. How did you? How did you meet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, why Mertz Bath? I guess it's my question. Well, uh, that opportunity kind of just fell into our laps. Yeah. But I mean, it's kind of like there's like no way we wouldn't have done that because he's. He's kind of uh, like the father of yeah. of, ex of this type of he's in top music. Of yeah, 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 exactly. So I mean, he's really into extreme music and he's really prolific. So I think he, I think it's cool for him to work with lots and lots and lots of people. And uh, he's got this live drummer he likes to perform with a lot for like the past like I don't know how many years, maybe like five years, or seven years, named Balaj Pandey. And Balash travels a lot. He was in New York City and uh, didn't know who he was. Just like this really jolly Hungarian guy. Little did we know he'd become like one of our best friends. And we found out like that he drummed with Mersbau. And we just started talking more and we sent him records and stuff. And he asked us like, yo, do you want to collaborate with Masami? He, he likes your band a lot. And we were just like dumbfounded that that was yeah. even like possible for us. Like that was, I don't know, it's just like, it feels insane. Pretty much. Yeah, as a kid, like, my intro into noise, so that's, like, it's Same. really mind-blowing, you know? And he's so laid back about how everything goes, and, like, he's so humble. Yeah. He just, he sent he sent us material and pretty much just gave us free reign. Cool. And, so, uh, yeah. and then he, he liked what we made, and we put it out, and we played with him twice. It's, it's awesome. He's the best guy ever. He's a true visionary artist. He, he, I don't know. It's cool. I can't say enough good things about him. Did you learn anything from collaborating with him? Absolutely. I mean, he's a very improvised. Doing doing like yeah. a, a full like improvised set like that and having no real direction, kind of just like going into it, definitely like made it way more easier to do like improvised sets now. You know, we kind of get it more. It's, it's cool. Yeah, live. That's his style, improvisation. Yeah. So, and with the uh, with any kind of like like motif with us collaborating with Mersbau. I've always felt like it should be drum heavy, like it's focused on the drums, the drums are kind of what Masami and Dave like drive whatever we're playing, so like Dave's always kind of like owned the shit and like we've like learned how to like watch each other, because I mean that's, he's like a master you know, so we just kind of like follow his lead, 
the two shows we did with him were awesome. It, it taught us a lot. We also learned that you can't please everybody because mm -hmm. I think we had like really big shoes to fill, like collaborating with Merce Bell because like who the fuck are we? We did what we wanted to do and I was really happy with how it came out. There were some people I think that like were crit like critical of it, but, but like critical I think of you guys in it or just critical, critical of the idea? Critical of both us and like the idea of us working with them and like, you know, like the finished product. But I think most people liked it. Like honestly, it was like overwhelmingly positive. But at first, the critique kind of got to me and like upset me, and it made me wonder if we did something wrong. But I'm proud of what we did, and like Masami likes it. So, yeah. what specifically? Uh, what critique specifically? Um, well, the, the way the album was promoted by Profound Lore. Yeah, I'm close. Sure, sure. Um, well, um, the way the album was promoted uh, wasn't really. He didn't really like impress too hard on people that it was like a double album. Like I think people missed that beat. So people thought like the first disc was all there was, and w the way we wrote the first disc was to have Masami in the role of like a member of Full of Hell, not like Masami just like it wasn't fifty fifty. You know what I mean? He was like very embedded into the music, and that's how we wanted it to be because the second disc is like reverse roles. So uh, people heard the first disc and were like, "There's not enough Merge Bell in it," like, which you know, fair enough. But uh, we liked how it turned out. So did Masami. But yeah, that, that was the critique. Noise is an element in your music. Yeah. I think I would say more than uh, most power violence bands. Like, <clears throat> what what about the noise element interested you? Why did you guys uh, feel, uh, feel it was something you wanted to explore? Well, Spencer was the one that uh, discussed putting noise into our music, like, really, really early on. And for me, like, I love anything like that. Like, the idea of putting like any kind of like harsh electronics into the music made perfect sense to me just like aesthetically and uh, kind of felt like it opened us up to kind of like express ourselves in new ways. It kind of like broke down walls, you know, it wasn't like just a traditional like rock based band anymore. It was like we could kind of make any kind of sounds we wanted. So uh, yeah, I guess that's where we were coming from.
guys are also pretty close with the body, right? Yeah, they're like our best friends now. We, I was just a huge, huge fan of the body for years, and I like, I wanted to play shows with them, so I got the drummer's phone number off of a mutual friend. Didn't know each other, and it turned out he's like the sweetest guy ever. And it also, I, I didn't even expect the body to like our music. I didn't care. Like the, just the fact that they wanted to play shows with me was enough. So we like, we meet up with them and start playing these shows, and they actually do like our band, and we become like best friends. And then they suggested doing a collaboration as well. And at this point, we like those guys so much that we're all kind of in agreement. Like, if we could just tour together for the rest of the time, we would just tour together and with no other bands. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they're great guys. When I saw you guys uh, in May, you were touring with the Body. How, uh, how long was that tour? Like six weeks. Yeah, all together. Because we recorded a record during the tour, too. Okay. Are there any plans to tour them again after this uh, upcoming yes. release? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, plans for sure. Yeah, 2016, we're gonna do Europe, Japan, and the United States with them. And the United States tour, since we did like the Body and Full of Hell like separ separate bands, this tour is gonna be uh, big band style, like collab, and we're gonna play songs from the collaboration. So it'll be basically both bands playing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. excellent. It's gonna be really cool, really, yeah. really loud. I think. Yeah. Um, the Body was so fucking loud that I think they melted my earplugs. Like, yeah. I, I literally, like, I had to... You gotta wear airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I literally had to, like, go to, like, the back of the room to actually hear something. Because when I was in the front, it was just, like, this vibration. Well, oh, and it's all subsonic. Like, yeah. the tone is so low that it's almost, at times, it feels more like you're listening to just vibrations rather than riffs. The body's a genius because when they collaborate with people, I feel like the music gets this whole new dimension to it. Like, I feel like their their sound is very conducive to, like adding any outside elements like it just it's so cool we did a few shows with the body in california before we came here and i got to do noise with them for a set it was really cool and they did a vow body collab set yes and it was it was so fucked up that it was it was so loud like i was even wearing earplugs and i was like holy shit <laughs> it's crazy and there were kids not wearing earplugs and it was like a cacophonous warehouse yeah. it's fucked up i mean i think between your music merch bow and the body, you have almost every style of like loud, heavy music covered. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I can't say I'm not like, I, I don't have moments where I just like wake up and I'm like, damn, like, how do we get so fucking lucky? Like, it's so cool. We're just like bumping shoulders with my heroes. Like, the body, the body are just like a touring band like us, but like, those dudes are my heroes, you know? I, I, I'm like such a huge fan of their band that to be, to be like, to have them consider us as their equals and like to tour with them and collaborate with them and just like talk to them on a daily basis and be like very close, nothing's better. And to have the opportunity to play with like Masami a yeah. couple times, yeah, that shit's crazy. Yeah, it's mind blowing. <laughs> and then to come here and like play really cool shows and have kids like really excited to see us and get to play with Wormrot and then Wormrot's like, man, I've been waiting for a long time to see you guys. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just because it feels like yesterday we started the band. When did you start the band? Like six years ago. <laughs> So it wasn't yeah. yesterday, yeah. but it's just like, I don't know. I mean, you guys are relatively young. Yeah, definitely. I, but my motto is just has been like, at least for me, it's just like, keep my mouth shut, just put my head down, and just like enjoy the fucking ride. And don't wonder how I got this lucky. Just like, live it and just stay modest and just enjoy it. You guys seem like a band that don't, um, don't plan a lot, just kind of go with the flow? We're pretty heavy planners, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. these two are pretty chill about yeah. things, but like, I'm pretty meticulous, and so is our, our guitar player, Spencer. Definitely. I mean, I have tours planned until 2017 now. Like, our whole year next year is planned. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're planners. Okay. Yeah. And that's why Southeast Asia was also like, maybe a little tiny bit stressful, because we like to have our ducks in a row before we go on a tour like this, and that just wasn't an option. It was like, yeah, man, the flights are booked, don't worry about it. <laughs> but no, like, e-tickets or anything. Right, right, right. And I was just like, uh... <laughs> yeah, nerve wracking for sure. Yeah. But it's cool. There, I mean, it worked out fine. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it honestly it takes a lot of balls to come out of here because there's so many variables, and even like on our end, there's a lot of like, like I don't know if you've heard about what's been going on like lately in Malaysia. But we had a show, and a lot of the guys who you might see them, who you might play with tonight, um, uh, got raided 
Yeah, yeah, we were talking Appy. about that. Yeah. 160 people or so we got, got arrested. Yeah, three days. Three days. Three days. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Fines. Yeah. Fucked so it's, it's always kind of like this, what's going to happen tonight? But I mean, like, they got permits for this show. We're kind of off the radar a bit, so it should, should be fine. Not to yeah, you guys out. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Oh, yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, yeah. It's but I honestly, like, whenever a band comes out here, we're always so fucking grateful because it's just like, you know, it's like it takes a lot to just, yeah. like, make it out here. It is um, a really long journey. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, me growing up, listening to Grindcore, I just, like, I was like, man, Southeast Asia is the shit. And, like, when we first started our band and we met Magruder Grind, we just, like, heard stories from Chris, uh, old drummer, about, like, when they came here and we were just like, that sounds like fucking crazy, like, crazy shows. And the stories he told me were just, like, unbeatable, like, funny and, like, insane. Like, yeah. he told me that they uh, they had a guy down here, maybe, maybe not Malaysia, I'm not sure where, but printed their t-shirts for the tour. And it was, Chris was like, all right, print us like X number of shirts for us to sell on the tour. Yeah, prints the shirts, they get down here, the guy gives them like a box, he's like, this is all that's left, it's like three shirts. And they see all their all the kids already wearing their shirts. The dude printed them and sold them. So they didn't have any merch for the whole tour. And it's just like, those are just priceless stories. And he told me the one place they went, there was like a fucking billboard with their pictures on them. That's which is hilarious. That sounds like Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Jakarta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jakarta made like a YouTube advertisement for the show and everything for our show. It should be cool. I forget. Are you guys playing Indonesia? Yeah, Jakarta. Okay. Cool. Very cool. It's like Monday. Okay. Not the best day, but at least we get to go. Yeah, no, like we're grateful that you guys managed to come here on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I, we're, yeah, we're grateful. Like, yeah, for sure. That's the other thing. Everyone's always like. Thank you for coming. And I'm just like, oh, thank you for coming yeah. to our show. Yeah. It still feels weird to play to people. It's like bands like us in the body. I mean, I feel like there's like this illusion, especially like maybe for kids down here, that we're just like some bands that just play like festivals, like this is hardcore and all our shows are that big. Yeah, yeah. But we, we play shitty shows. Like every tour has at least one shitty show for us in the States and, and Europe, especially Europe. And like, I don't know. I don't think we could ever lose our humility because our, our any egos that we might have are constantly being checked by failures. So it's not like we're not a strangers to that. So this is very humbling. Yeah. One thing I'm hoping that happens tonight, which usually happens, um, this place is a little bit strange because I like Romapi, which doesn't really have a stage. This has a really high stage. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know what the crowd surfing and watch the is going to be like. When I saw you guys play ABC, which also doesn't have a stage, it was fucking ridiculous. There was yeah, bodies yeah. flying everywhere. It was really fun. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just kind of left thinking, like, that's what a full of hell show is like. When we're lucky. <laughs> There's been, I'd say, three of the shows so far down here. Really? Almost all of them. Kids were... Actually, scratch that. Every single night, kids have been crowd surfing in motion. So, it's a good stage. to crack. That's only, like, Arif and the Walmart guys were on the high stage, but... It's a good stage to stage dive. You don't really have to like fight to get on top of people's heads. Yeah, You're yeah. already up there. Yeah. So hopefully some hit tonight. Yeah, hopefully not lying on our head. The lighter kids were able to get off the stage at uh, Sick of It All and uh, nobody got hurt. So hopefully, but I feel like your crowd is probably going to be more intense than the Sick of It All crowd. Maybe. I don't really know. It's really hard to say. Yeah. I mean, at home, like certain towns we play, there's this weird contingent of like ass beating hardcore kids that still like us, which I thought would literally, I thought those kids were gonna like check out on us like two years ago. Yeah. But they're still around. So we like to play a little bit of ass beating for them. Okay. And those kids maybe would like ruin somebody's day, but down here it seems like everybody's pretty late. So. <laughs> the other thing that I saw when you guys played ABC Novia was the whole um, noise slash uh, like literally like metal. Like a uh, segment where you were banging on a piece of metal with. Oh some yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you gonna Are you gonna get to do any of that tonight? No, probably not. But it's it's definitely cool to do as much as as much as we can. Usually, when when I do that, it's pretty like on the spot. When we get there and decide yeah. like, oh, I want to do that shit, so I'll just go steal some shit from like construction yeah, sites. Yeah, depends or on the availability of like an industrial park. Right? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's it ends up being. Cool you should have let us know, man. I, I'm not sure. I'd Passed by like six on the way over here. Our <laughs> van has like a couple big ass chains and some gloves and like some sheet metal. In the U.S., in the I usually always. do it. Yeah, now for sure in the U.S. Sometimes mainly, even, even if it's just like chains and stuff. You know, we have a still. new bass player. Maybe you saw that kid, the 
the long haired kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he like rips on the saxophone. Uh, no. So we've we've been he his first tour with us was actually like the tour before the body tour, yeah. and he came along as an extra member and played saxophone with us every night. That shit was awesome. So like when we do noise sets, like we did a set with Mertzbau in Holland, like in September, and he played saxophone. And that is like having a guy in the band that can play a saxophone is like such a huge asset because whenever we do any noise sets or anything, like, dude, if we can get a sax, he like shreds that shit. That's a Mississippi shit right there. Yeah, it's really cool. So we're doing a noise set down in uh, Australia with this band called Occult Blood. We're playing this like this old jazz improv jazz club and uh, doing like a double set. We're gonna get him on the sax. Right? Probably get some sheet metal too. Yeah, for sure. We did that last year. We played it. Yeah. Excellent. So finishing up, what do you have to say to the kids who've already come out on this tour and the kids who are going to see you in a few days? Uh, uh, it's a big thank you and like infinite respect to all of them. Like, uh, sure. they should all start bands and and like you know make too. records. Yeah. Do what they want to do. It's definitely super humbling. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah, I don't know. Big thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Can't sure. say it enough. That's what it is. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to see Shane Brainy from the devil's house taking me. Out of darkness, walk me. Out of blindness, lift me. Out of sadness, save me. From my damnness, please, Lord.